would you like to get nerdy with me about emotions? So many trauma survivors tell me and experience not feeling safe with their emotions. During the traumatic event, it generally is such a flood of emotions that later getting back in touch with our emotions can feel intense and overwhelming. So for some folks, it can be really helpful to understand the biology behind why we have emotions. Because sometimes when we understand and have that psycho ed in place, it can make it just a little bit easier to understand why we actually need emotions. Let's start at right at the beginning. Emotions serve a purpose. However you wanna view this, you might just take that as a fact that I'm saying emotions must serve a purpose if they exist, or think of it from the evolutionary perspective. If we have emotions, they must have evolved to be there for some reason, right? They wouldn't just evolve to be here for no reason. And research be researchers, because they're so good at this type of thing, have looked into it and they've identified four key reasons that we have emotions, which then has four implications for if we don't feel our emotions. So we're gonna go through each of these four um, reasons and then the four implications together. So the first function of our emotions is that they orient and help us perceive situations. Let me give you an example. You're walking down the street, doing your thing, just walking about. And a random stranger who you've never met walks up to you and they say, I just broke up with my boyfriend. From this sentence alone, you don't quite know what's going on, right? Is this a good thing that they broke up with their boyfriend or are they devastated? From the sentence alone, we actually don't know. It's not until they say either, I'm so happy about it or I'm devastated that we understand what's going on. We know now if they say I'm thrilled that this is a fantastic thing that they broke up with their partner, right? So the emotion of thrilled in this example helps orient us to the situation and helps us perceive what's going on. So that's the first function of our emotions. They orient and help us perceive the environment around us. The second function of emotions is that they help us make decisions. Those who don't have or experience emotions really struggle to make decisions. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna offer you a trip and it's completely paid for to one of two places. The only catch is that you have to choose within five seconds of me finishing telling you what the options are. You have to choose really fast. So here's trip option number one. You are going to go to New York and you are going to stay in downtown, what's it called? Central Square, whatever the heck it's called. That's where you're gonna stay, right in the heart of New York. And you are gonna stay there for a week. You're going to go to restaurants. You are going to go to all the fancy shows for one full week. That's option one. Option two is that you are going to a secluded camping spot. You are in the middle of nowhere in this little cottage. It is just you and you are staying there for a week with your book and your cup of tea. Make the choice, where are you going? Option one or option two, New York or camping? Most likely how you made this choice is based on the emotions that came up with each option. Depending on, on who you are, when I told you about New York, you might've been so excited or you might've been absolutely disgusted and maybe even a little scared at the idea of that many people. When I told you about camping, you might've felt relaxed and oh, it would be so nice to get away for a little while. Or you might've felt like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so boring. But most likely you used your emotions to understand how you would feel about each choice and you chose accordingly. So as you can see, your emotions helped you make the decision of which trip might be best for you. The third function of emotions is that they give us energy and they motivate us. So let's imagine that we're feeling really angry. I want you, if it feels safe for you, to settle into your body for just a moment and think about what it feels like to be angry. Your muscles get energy, right? They kind of gear up to do something. This is super important because if we're feeling angry, there's probably a threat and our body is giving us the energy to protect us. Alternately, think about excitement. Again, if it feels safe, tune into your body moment. Energy really excites us, right? It gives, sorry, <laughs> excitement really energizes us. It gives us a lot of energy to do something with. And generally, if we're excited, we want to engage in what might be happening next. So the motion is giving us energy to fully participate in whatever comes next. The last function of emotions is that they communicate to others what is needed from them. I want you to think about a baby because I find it's often easier to think about it that way. A little baby starts laughing. That probably tells you that you can just connect with that baby, right? You can take a moment to kind of engage with the baby. If on the other hand, the baby starts crying, that's gonna send you a different message, right? The emotion or maybe the sadness that that baby is feeling might tell you that there's a need that they have that needs to be met, right? 
Fast forward to adulthood, the exact same is true. If I see someone crying, that might communicate to me that they need something from me and that there's a need that I might try and figure out what it is. If on the other hand, I see that someone's really angry, that might communicate to me that they need a little bit of space and I need to step back. So our emotions communicate to other people what they need from us in that moment so that we can respond accordingly. So if these are the four functions of emotions, there would of course naturally be four implications if we don't feel our emotions. So let's go through those now. So function number one of emotions was to help orient and perceive a situation. If we don't feel our feelings, we end up feeling very lost and very confused. We don't really know what's expected of us in any given situation, and we're not really sure what others want or need from us. We end up feeling really overwhelmed because what is going on and what am I supposed to be doing right now? The second function of our emotions is that they help us make decisions. So you can see where this one's going, that if we don't have access to our emotions, we often don't know how to make decisions. Emotions are what allow us to make decisions. Without them, we don't end up making decisions and we end up kind of stuck sometimes. The third function of our emotions was that they give us energy or they motivate us. So if we don't have access to our emotions, well, we don't have energy. We end up feeling really lethargic and we just don't really see the point in doing anything and our body never gets us up and going. So often, one of the causes of depression, as a bit of a side note, is that we don't have access to our emotions because we just don't have the energy to do anything. So we just kind of sit and we wait for something to happen. Lastly, when we don't have access to our emotions, we often really struggle to connect with other people and we often end up feeling very isolated. Because emotion, emotion communicates to others what they need from us and what we need from them, it goes both ways. When we don't have access, other people don't really know what, what we need from them and we don't know what others need from us, which can make us feel really disconnected. So there you have it. Those are the four functions of our emotions and then the four implications if we don't feel our emotions. Again, why I share this is because many folks who experience trauma struggle to get in touch with their emotions. And I know that me just giving you a bunch of facts isn't going to change that, isn't going to make it less scary. But sometimes it can help build the motivation as to why we would want to get back in touch with our emotions in the first place.